What time is it? You know what time it is. It's time to hit that subscribe button. You know just where it's at. Right down there. Right down there. And it's time to find my Instagram. That's Geekly Amanda. G E E K L Y Amanda. It's the same on Twitter. Make sure to find me in both places. And it's time to get this Mahabharat review started. All right, y'all. I have to admit, I was so excited to watch this season of the Mahabharat, season 18, because it tells of Krishna's like earlier life, which I have already watched all the little Krishnas, you know, so many other stories I've watched and read about the, the Lord Krishna. So I was aware of almost like, I think almost all of these. I was, I was like, I know all these stories. I know them. I could give you more details about them. <laughs> I felt like an expert, like a Krishna expert. What better way to be, what better, like, what better thing to be in life than a Krishna expert? I can't think of a better thing. Now, even though, you know, I know the stories and everything, I'm going to tell you, some of it was still so hard to watch, so hard to watch, especially, you know, at the beginning when, you know, Kanza takes, you know, locks up Krishna's mom and dad and, and takes all the babies born and, and, and murders them. Oh, I mean, it's one thing. I, I was even, you know, you've probably seen some of the reactions. Like we watched those episodes together where, you know, I was bald and crying watching the animated versions of this in, in Kanza killing the babies. But when watching this, when it's like real people, I was, I had to turn my head off. I was like, I can't look, I can't look. And then my husband's like, what's wrong over there? Greg was over there. What's wrong? And I'm like, oh, it's the part they're killing the babies. And he's like, what are you watching? I'm like, Bahar, Bahar. And then so then he knows because I always talk about it. But I mean, that made it so hard to watch when with those events, you're actually watching with real people. So these stories of Krishna being told, I guess, because you know, last season messed me up. They didn't have the subtitles. A lot of people helped me with like the events that happened in the important parts, which I'm so grateful for. But I'm a little lost of like why they even telling these stories. I mean, they're all sitting in this big hall and Krishna's there and, and you know, the Pandavas' sons are there and Draupadi's there and the Pandavas and they have this guy up there just telling the stories of Krishna. So I'm like, well, what's going on? How did this arrive? Because I missed... I missed all that stuff from last season. I tried to follow, but without subtitles, it's impossible. But what the question I have now is, right, they're telling these stories. And while they're telling them, you know, Krishna will stop and do his little lessons, which that's one thing you got to love about Krishna. Every little thing he does, it's like a lesson in life and a lesson you should follow and, and get something out of. So when they're telling these stories, he keeps giving lessons, but then he's looking over at Draupadi. I was like, so I was like, all of this, he's trying to give these lessons and tell these stories for Draupadi. But I'm like, I wonder why? What is he trying to tell Draupadi through these stories? Especially when a lot of sto the stories is like, you know, ones that are, are him standing up for righteousness and standing up, you know, taking control of their circumstances and just doing what has to be done at that time. And so it makes me think is like, Draupadi really not want to go to this war i mean that's what it's all coming up to the big war and stuff so is he kind of like talking trying to tell Drapati that this is uh, uh important to go to this war that like doing these events and stand up i mean you get results from it and it's important for dharma and, and the balanced dharma and, and and for righteousness and standing up for righteousness and your circumstances and everything so I'm like, is that what he's trying to get through to Patty, to Patty with this and tell her? I, I was not sure why he was focusing on her, but it was very apparent that he was. I mean, every time he talked, he would look over at her and she'd look at him like, I know. <laughs> no, that's how it felt like. He would look at her and like, Drapati, this is why. And she would look, she's like, oh. she would just, you wish you just had this look. I'm like, I know, little Krishna, you're you're always right. I know, <laughs> you know, which I just love that relationship between them two. You could just tell, you know, their friendship, and he was always there for Drapati. He, little Krishna is always there for all of us. But you know, when she when they were trying to declothe her, and he was, I love their relationship. I do. It's special. Then you see little Krishna as a boy, and 
up to his little mischievousness. That I mean, that's one reason I always felt like I had this special connection with the Lord Krishna. Out of all the avatars, out of all the avatars that Lord Vishnu came back, I have a special attachment to Lord Krishna. And I think it's just because, you know, his mischievousness and his silliness and and his humor, his sense of humor. I've always said, because sometimes, like, I got a sense of humor. I will take any situation, even the most awkward, in, and, and be able to find a joke in it and make people laugh. I do. And then some people are like, Amanda. That ain't right. And I'm like, listen, God, our, God gave us a sense of humor to use. If my, if my sense of humor was a, you know, a God-given gift, if he didn't want me to use it, he wouldn't get, give it to me. Obviously, I was given this sense of humor for a reason, and it's to bring smiles or whatever. And I feel like that's also like what how Lord Krishna goes through, like, you know, his life and everything. Always, you know, always with a lesson, Always went important lesson, but he always has that just childless, like demeanor, childness, not less, childness demeanor and and a, a, chi- a joyish, a joy, I can't say words, a joyful child soul. That's, that's what I would say. I, I always said, I'm like, I never want to lose that, that joy and that innocence and, and, and childish soul that that just brings you know happiness through anything and not to be so serious adult i want to be a a silly kid for us little krishna over there stealing butter just doing his little stuff you know but also like even through his little antics and mischievousness i mean he always does have a lesson even with the krishna's like why are you giving that butter to kanza this is our butter these are our calls these are like say this shouldn't go to and he's like, well, I'm going to drink it. <laughs> That's what Krishna ain't afraid of no Kanza. And then other that we got to see the serpents that he like when, you know, with his, uh, his whole um, attack on the serpents and my favorite thing. I, probably out of all the Krishna stories I watched and, and learned about is when he held up the hill. With his little pinky. We got to see it. He's holding up the hill with his little pinky. That's one of my favorite stories in there. And I'm so glad that this incorporate, incorporated into the Mahabharat uh, episodes, that one, because it is my favorite. And then we got into, right, then they're like, okay, well, it's time to go. you got to go face your uncle now. He's got to go face him. Of course, he's going to take his brother uh, Balaram with him. And then, oh, then you got to see, too, when he's telling his bye and every, the whole village bye and, and Radha. She comes up and oh, touches his feet. Oh, I was just like, oh, melting my heart. Cause I, then you know how you know that turns out. Just you know, he, he ends up with her. But still, you just look at like that childhood puppy love with, between them two, and you're just like, oh, the eternal love was even started back then. And of course, as a mom, I was bawling again. Cause then you know he has to tell his mom bye. He has to tell her bye, and and she's over there feeding him the butter and everything. And I'm just like, oh. Oh, to have to let him go because you know, even that whole village. I mean, Krishna was just everything. I mean, when you have a Lord living in your village, you know, your Lord's living there. You know it. You he done open his mouth and you saw the whole universe in his mouth. You done know. You don't want to give that up. You're like, no, stay with that village. He's the protector. He's protecting you from everything. Holding up the mountain over them. I wouldn't want Lord Krishna to go from my village. I wouldn't want him to leave. I would be sad too. And oh, you can just tell like the whole village there just don't want him to go. But I mean, he's going to face his uncle. This is it. This is what his, he's been looking, you know, not looking forward to, but where his fate has been bringing him through all that, his childhood and everything is for this time to go face that uncle. Who's been trying to kill him this whole time? I was like, it's about time he does, because, yeah, look, that uncle's been trying to kill him since he was, before he's born. So he goes to the town, right? He goes to the town and greeted by the people. But I didn't hear the story. I don't know where, if it's something that's actually in the scriptures or maybe something just added. Because I know how they add stuff to, you know, the the, the these uh, episodes just to give it more dramatic feel or whatever. But they had the, the girl come up to him and she was all crooked. 
right? She was all crooked and coming to touch his feet. And, and he was like, well, I'm here. And she was like, you're here to kill, Ka right? Your uncle, Ka Uncle Kaza. And he's like, well, no, I'm not here to, to kill my uncle. I'm here to fix all the crookedness in the world. And I was like, oh, what's it? First, I was like, what's he trying to do to poor crooked girl? And then there she is, stands up straight. I was like, oh, miracle done by Krishna. Lord Krishna done made the crooked girl straight. <laughs> made the crooked girl straight. I hope that's really a, a true story. I hope so that it wasn't just added because that one there was just like, oh, you can just some more miracles done by the Lord Krishna. Well, of course, you know, it's time to go to the arena. The battle, the battle between Krishna and his brother and, and Kansas, uh what was the name of his, so Kanur and Mushtik? Because, it, it, I mean, I mean, they're going to have a battle going on there. But then this is the part I was just like, oh, they got the mom up and, and dad up there. He brought the mom and dad to the arena to watch. They all in the chains and stuff. But I'm like, oh, they don't even get, he don't even get to go tell them hi first. <laughs> I mean, you just got to have them up there. That just tells you, Kans is just awful, awful. I mean, he deserves everything that Lord Krishna is going to bring on him. And we know how this ends. But that I, I did like this season, although there's really not much new I learned from this season. There wasn't, I've, I've heard all these stories and everything, but it was just neat to see. I, everything I've watched from these stories have been animated. So it really was neat to watch, you know, real life people playing out these tales, but also in in our, in the Mahabharata, already the, this story that I love and have the... You know, the characters that I, the, the actors and everything that I love who are playing these people. So I really enjoyed, even though I know the stories, I really enjoyed watching them again. And it's hard to give a, 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 re, a, you know, a review of this because I'm like, it's already stories I know. What more can I say? Now, next season, I was looking and they're kind of finishing up, right? They're, what's coming up next season? We're going to give next week a review on the next one, but it's kind of like, well, Lord Krishna rescues his parents, but then I guess it gets back then. No more of like telling of Krishna's past. It gets back into preparing for this war. And that's when this drama is really going to unfold, right? We're going on season 19 and there's only like 28, you know? So I, I've, there, like out of episodes, I've already watched something like 280 episodes it's something it's something outrageous no it's not 280 but it was like 180 190 it was no 100 i think i watched 190 episodes of mahabharata already and i already I only have like 70 to go so i'm way over halfway through and i'm kind of getting sad that it's starting to come to an end because this has been a journey like that i have enjoyed you know not only just watching it and learning about it but just I've connected to it spiritually and and it's definitely you know awoken something in me and I'm glad to actually have the opportunity to explore it so anyway let me know what you think comments thumbs and all that until next time y'all